welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Wacky Wednesday. So, for this prompt for Wacky Wednesday, you are supposed to recommend characters or talk about some characters that you would like at your birthday dinner. <laughs> I have picked my top seven characters that I would like at my birthday dinner, which is in April, so if you're watching this, you're all invited. Um, I excluded all, um, all nonfiction, so this is purely fictional characters. Because if I included nonfiction, then it would have been a whole different list. I realize that I read a lot, a lot of thrillers. And who wants some unreliable, scary-ass person at their um, birthday dinner? Right? Well, apparently, I want two scary ass people at my uh, birthday dinner. So we're going to talk about my two people from thrillers. Both of these people, both of these characters are serial killers. Both of them are professors. One is a high school teacher and one is a college professor, but they're both amazing serial killers. So there's Scarlett Clark from They Never Learn by Lane Farga. Scarlett is a college professor at this elite school, you know, that's the gate to the school. You can see the buildings. <clears throat> But she kills men that deserve to die. That's all you have to know going into it. It's dark academia. It's thrilling. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. Now, if you want a little slower-paced serial killer book, then um, meet Teddy Crutcher from For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. Oh yeah, so Teddy Crutcher is a high school teacher who accidentally murders the wrong person. So somehow he murders someone and a student gets blamed for that faculty member's death and that student gets arrested. And so Teddy is trying to make things right by murdering other people so that they will see that the first, the student that they locked up is innocent. So he's a serial killer with a conscience, kind of, but it's very slow paced. It's more like, it's not really a mystery because you know what happens, but it's very slow and uh, versus They Never Learn, uh, Scarlett Clark, she's just, she's just on fire and she's like action packed and, um, Teddy Crutcher is more slow paced. He's very smart, but he's very detail oriented. So he takes his time to plan things out. Scarlett is just she's wild. She just does what she wants. She has no care in the world. And uh, I would love for them to come to my tea, to my birthday dinner so I could talk to them about what worked and what didn't work when they were planning these murders. If Scarlett even plans them, I think she just like does it. <laughs> uh, then I have, okay, so I have a few romances because I found that it was easier to pick romances 
where I wanted to be BFFs with the characters or, you know, something like that. But I am going to go to my only literary fiction. I would want to hang out with Una. I would want Una at my birthday dinner because then I could ask her about the future because, you know, her timeline is a lot different than ours. We just go day to day, year to year. But when Una turns 19, she wakes up and she's 51. And she's lived this really amazing life, but she doesn't know any of it because her timeline is crazy and out of whack. And then the following year, she wakes up and physically she's only 20, but in the book, I think she's like 48. And I just really would love to know how I would like to meet her like later in life, not when she's like 20, maybe when she's like 30, close to 30 or older. But I would love to know how like we perceive time so much differently than I'm sure Una would. And I would love to know how that's impacted her life. And just, it, I would ask her so many philosophical questions. Uh, that I said that wrong. I'm sorry. Then, um, this is the only, this is the last one that's not a romance. The next three are romances. But I would love to hang out with Bailey. Bailey could come to my dinner party. He could come hang out in my library. Um, so Bailey is from A Dog's Purpose series. I'm holding A Dog's Journey, which is the second in the series. I haven't read the third one, but Bailey just tells you exactly what a dog's purpose. Like, I am a dog owner. I have two dogs. I had three, but I had to put one down a couple years ago, a few, three years ago, three years ago. Wow. Um, but I'm a very big dog lover. I, I love dogs. I love all animals, but there's a special place in my heart for dogs. And, uh... A dog's purpose just like crushed my soul and I just need to meet Bailey because Bailey had a purpose and he knew his purpose and he knew why he was on earth and I think that a lot of people think that they need their dogs but the truth is that our doggos need us just as much if not more. I'm struggling with one of my dogs right now. She's getting older and she's going blind. And it's really hurtful to watch her. She used to be like pretty active and like a fun little dog. But I know that when you get older, you know, not so much. But she gets confused really easily and she doesn't know where I am. So if she can't hear my voice, she'll search my entire house and she'll like hit her head on the door when the door's closed and it's just really sad. So I would love to meet Bailey and just play with Bailey and like maybe my doggos could meet Bailey and Bailey could teach them a couple things about what it means to be a doggo. Alright. These last three are romances, and I'm going to start with this one because I want to meet both of the characters in this book. The other two are just the girls, so I would like to meet Josh and Hazel from Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. Um, you know, Josh and Hazel kind of remind me a lot of me and my husband, because I am a teacher. I started out as a 
kindergarten teacher, just like Hazel, and she found third grade, and that's like her sweet spot. I found second grade, that's my sweet spot. So we're both teachers, so we could relate on that fact where we're just big grown-up kids. And uh, <clears throat> Hazel and I are both very fun, just grown-up kids, like I said. Uh, Josh and my husband Patrick are both uh, kind of stick in the muds. They, you know, they are too serious sometimes. And, like, I adore my husband, but I think that Hazel and I could, like, teach these boys a couple lessons about, you know, letting loose, having some fun, and, yeah, adulting is hard, and being an adult, you know, there's lots of responsibilities, but why make everything extra hard on yourself? Just, you know, let loose a little bit, and uh, I think Hazel and I could teach them. All right, the next two, well, let's just go with Kala. Yeah, Kala from The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I would specifically not, I, I would only want Kala from the second half of the book. Um, at the beginning of this book, Kala is very, like, stuck up and very, like, city girl. And there's nothing wrong with being a city girl. But you have to also know how to take care of yourself. And she didn't really know how to take care of herself. She also always put herself first at the beginning of the story. And I didn't really personally love her. There's nothing wrong with an unlikable character. Especially when that unlikable character turns into such a freaking amazing person. So... You follow Kala, who's going back to Alaska, where she hasn't been since she was three, because her dad is dying of cancer, and she wants to reconnect with him before she, uh, before he dies. So she goes there, and she meets Jonah, who is, like, the opposite of her, who hates her already, and it's their love story, but it's also Kala's coming of age, and kind of just... I mean, I think she's 19 or 20 in this book, so it's like a later in life com coming of age, kind of, because usually it's like when you're 14 or 15. So it reads like an adult book. It is an adult book, but it's like her character growth in this book is just so solid. And then you also get the Kala and her dad kind of bonding and getting to know each other. And it, this is a super sad book, but I would love to have Kala come talk to me and, like, I just want to know more about her, like, growth process. So maybe I should actually talk to K.A. Tucker about her character growth because it was amazing. And the last, but definitely not least one is Vanessa from Life's Too Short by Abby Hamenzi. Oh, this, Vanessa has a special place in my heart. Like, oh. So, Vanessa finds out that she, well, let's see. Oh, okay. So, she has... Hmm. Let's see. Vanessa is scared of to live life, but something happens and she just kind of quits her job and becomes a YouTuber and she gets millions of followers and sponsorships and all this kind of stuff. And then her sister leaves her sister's baby at her doorstep and says, I can't be a mom right now, but you're a great person, so take my kid. And uh, that's kind of how you start this book. But she's always been afraid to have a family of her own because of health reasons. And um, I just love Vanessa so much because she doesn't take anything for granted and she doesn't let anything stand in her way. Yeah, she's a little bit scared at first, but with her growth through this book and like, yeah, it is a romance and I don't even remember the guy's name. Adrian, Adrian, 
he was sweet, but I would rather meet Vanessa. I just connected with her so hard. Like, her sister and her mom died before they were 30. And uh, now she's afraid that she's going to die before she turns 30. So she's trying to keep people away from her and she doesn't want them to get hurt but she also doesn't want to get hurt herself until she finally like just learns to grow and let that wall down and it was just so freaking cute and I love Vanessa so much like mm, she would definitely have to be at my dinner and then I was trying to figure out I'm like Mm, someone should have to cook, but you know what? I love cooking, so I'll cook for all of them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're new around here. I'll see you guys later. Bye.